Praise the Lord. According to one year Bible reading plan day 29, we have Leviticus chapter 5 to 7. Leviticus chapter 5. Sin offerings are required in the following cases. If you are officially summoned to give evidence in court and do not give information about something you have seen or heard, you must suffer the consequences. If you unintentionally touch anything ritually unclean such as a dead animal you are unclean and guilty as soon as you realize what you have done If you unintentionally touch anything of human origin that is unclean whatever it may be you are guilty as soon as you realize what you have done If you make a careless vow no matter what it is about You are guilty as soon as you realize what you have done. When you are guilty, you must confess the sin, and as the penalty for your sin, you must bring to the Lord a female sheep or goat as an offering. The priest shall offer the sacrifice for your sin. If you cannot afford a sheep or a goat, you shall bring to the Lord as a payment for your sin two doves or two pigeons, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. you shall bring them to the priest who will first offer the bird for the sin offering he will break its neck without pulling off its head and sprinkle some of its blood against the side of the altar the rest of the blood will be drained out at the base of the altar this is an offering to take away sin then he shall offer the second bird as a burnt offering according to the regulations In this way the priest shall offer the sacrifice for your sin and you will be forgiven. If you cannot afford two doves or two pigeons, you shall bring two pounds of flour as a sin offering. You shall not put any olive oil or any incense on it because it is a sin offering, not a grain offering. You shall bring it to the priest who will take a handful of it as a token. that it has all been offered to the lord and he will burn it on the altar as a food offering it is an offering to take away sin in this way the priest shall offer the sacrifice for your sin and you will be forgiven the rest of the floor belongs to the priest just as in the case of a grain offering the lord gave the following regulations to moses if any of you sin unintentionally by failing to hand over the payments that are sacred to the lord you shall bring as your repayment offering to the lord a male sheep or goat without any defects its value is to be determined according to the official standard you must make the payments you have failed to hand over and must pay an additional 20% you shall give it to the priest and the priest shall offer the animal as a sacrifice for your sin and you will be forgiven If any of you sin unintentionally by breaking any of the Lord's commands you are guilty and must pay the penalty you must bring to the priest as a repayment offering a male sheep or goat without any defects its value is to be determined according to the official standard the priest shall offer the sacrifice for the sin which you committed unintentionally and you will be forgiven It is a repayment offering for the sin you committed against the Lord. Leviticus chapter 6. The Lord gave the following regulations to Moses. An offering is to be made if any of you sin against the Lord by refusing to return what another Israelite has left as a deposit or by stealing something from him or by cheating him or by lying about something that has been lost. and swearing that you did not find it when you sin in any of these ways you must repay whatever you got by dishonest means on the day you are found guilty you must repay the owner in full plus an additional 20% you shall bring it to the priest as your repayment offering to the lord a male sheep or goat without any defects its value is to be determined according to the official standard The priest shall offer the sacrifice for your sin and you will be forgiven. The Lord commanded Moses to give Aaron and his sons the following regulations for burnt offerings. 
A burnt offering is to be left on the altar all night long, and the fire is to be kept burning. Then the priest, wearing his linen robe and linen shorts, shall remove the greasy ashes left on the altar and put them at the side of the altar. Then he shall change his clothes and take the ashes outside the camp to a ritually clean place. The fire on the altar must be kept burning and never allowed to go out. Every morning, the priest shall put firewood on it, arrange the burnt offering on it, and burn the fat of the fellowship offering. The fire must always be kept burning on the altar and never allowed to go out. The following are the regulations for grain offerings. An Aaronite priest shall present the grain offering to the Lord in front of the altar. Then he shall take a handful of the flour and oil and the incense on it and burn it on the altar as a token that all of it has been offered to the Lord. The odor of this offering is pleasing to the Lord. The priest shall eat the rest of it. It shall be made into bread, baked without yeast, and eaten in a holy place, the courtyard of the tent of the Lord's presence. The Lord has given it to the priests as their part of the food offerings. It is very holy, like the sin offerings and the repayment offerings. For all time to come, any of the male descendants of Aaron may eat it as their continuing share of the food offered to the Lord. Anyone else who touches a food offering will be harmed by the power of its holiness. The Lord gave Moses the following regulations for the ordination of an Aaronite priest. On the day he is ordained, he shall present as an offering to the Lord two pounds of flour, the same amount as the daily offering half in the morning and half in the evening. It is to be mixed with oil and cooked on a griddle and then crumbled and presented as a grain offering, an order pleasing to the Lord. For all time to come, this offering is to be made by every descendant of Aaron who is serving as high priest. It shall be completely burned as a sacrifice to the Lord. No part of a grain offering that a priest makes must be eaten. All of it must be burnt. The Lord commanded Moses to give Aaron and his sons the following regulations for sin offerings. The animal for a sin offering shall be killed on the north side of the altar, where the animals for the burnt offerings are killed. This is a very holy offering. The priest who sacrifices the animal shall eat it in a holy place. The courtyard of the tent of the Lord's presence. Anyone or anything that touches the flesh of the animal will be harmed by the power of its holiness. If any article of clothing is spattered with the animal's blood, it must be washed in a holy place. Any clay pot in which the meat is boiled must be broken, and if a metal pot is used, it must be scrubbed and rinsed with water. Any male of the priestly families may eat this offering. It is very holy. But if any of the blood is brought into the tent and used in the ritual to take away sin, the animal must not be eaten. It must be burned. Leviticus chapter 7 The following are the regulations for repayment offerings which are very holy. The animal for this offering is to be killed on the north side of the altar, where the animals for the burnt offerings are killed, and its blood is to be thrown against all four sides of the altar. All of its fat shall be removed and offered on the altar, the fat tail, the fat covering the internal organs, the kidney and the fat on them, and the best parts of the liver. The priest shall burn all the fat on the altar as a food offering to the Lord. It is a repayment offering. Any male of the priestly families may eat it, but it must be eaten in a holy place because it is very holy. There is one regulation that applies to both the sin offering and the repayment offering. The meat belongs to the priest who offers the sacrifice. 
The skin of an animal offered as a burnt offering belongs to the priest who offers the sacrifice. Every grain offering that has been baked in an oven or prepared in a pan or on a griddle belongs to the priest who has offered it to the Lord. But all uncooked grain offerings, whether mixed with oil or dry, belong to all Aaronite priests and must be shared equally among them. The following are the regulations for the fellowship offerings presented to the Lord. If you make this offering as a thanksgiving offering to the Lord, you shall present together with the animal to be sacrificed an offering of bread made without yeast, either thick loaves made of flour mixed with olive oil, or thin cakes brushed with olive oil, or cakes of flour mixed with olive oil. In addition, you shall offer loaves of bread baked with yeast. You shall present one part of each kind of bread as a special contribution to the Lord. It belongs to the priest who takes the blood of the animal and throws it against the altar. The flesh of the animal must be eaten on the day it is sacrificed. None of it may be left until the next morning. If you bring a fellowship offering as fulfillment of a vow or as your own free will offering, not all of it has to be eaten on the day it is offered, but any that is left over may be eaten on the following day. Any meat that still remains on the third day must be burnt. If any of it is eaten on the third day, God will not accept your offering. The offering will not be counted to your credit, but will be considered unclean, and whoever eats it will suffer the consequences. If the meat comes into contact with anything ritually unclean, it must not be eaten, but must be burnt. Any of you that are ritually clean may eat the meat. But if any of you who are not clean eat it, you shall no longer be considered one of God's people. Also, if you eat the meat of this offering after you have touched anything ritually unclean, whether from a person or an animal, you shall no longer be considered one of God's people. The Lord gave Moses the following regulations for the people of Israel. No fat of cattle, sheep or goat shall be eaten. The fat of an animal that has died a natural death or has been killed by a wild animal must not be eaten, but it may be used for any other purpose. Anyone who eats the fat of an animal that may be offered as a food offering to the Lord will no longer be considered one of God's people. No matter where the Israelites live, they must never use the blood of birds or animals for food. Anyone who breaks this law will no longer be considered one of God's people. The Lord gave Moses the following regulations for the people of Israel. When any of you offer a fellowship offering, you must bring part of it as a special gift to the Lord, bringing it with your own hands as food offering. You shall bring the fat of the animal with its breast and present it as a special gift to the Lord. The priest shall burn the fat on the altar, but the breast shall belong to the priest. The right hand leg of the animal shall be given as a special contribution to the priest who offers the blood and the fat of the fellowship offering. The breast of the animal is a special gift and the right hand leg is a special contribution that the Lord has taken from the people of Israel and given to the priest. This is what the people of Israel must give to the priest for all time to come. This is a part of the food offered to the Lord that was given to Aaron and his sons on the same day they were ordained as priests. On that day, the Lord commanded the people of Israel to give them this part of the offering. It is a regulation that the people of Israel must obey for all time to come. These then are the regulations for the burnt offerings, the grain offerings, the sin offerings, the repayment offerings, the ordination offerings, and the fellowship offerings. There on Mount Sinai in the desert, the Lord gave these commands to Moses on the day he told the people of Israel to make their offerings.
May the Lord bless us abundantly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.